A battery is an energy storage device. It stores energy in the form of chemical energy. Chemical energy can be stored relatively easily and efficiently, not taking up much space or weight, and with relatively small losses over time. While a battery stores chemical energy and not electrical energy, the stored chemical energy can easily be converted to electrical energy, that is, electricity, which is then released from the battery. This makes batteries ideal for powering small portable electrical devices, such as smartphones, tablets, laptops and so on, since those devices clearly run off electricity. But we also want the battery to store as much energy as possible, with as few losses over time as possible, so we can carry on using our smartphone or laptop for as long as possible, while also being as small and as lightweight as possible. For exactly the same reasons, this also makes batteries a good choice for powering electric vehicles. There are many different types of battery, including the lead acid battery, the alkaline battery, the nickel hydride battery, and last but certainly not least, the lithium ion battery, which is now used in pretty much all portable devices, including smartphones, tablets, laptops, and electric vehicles. This is because the lithium ion battery offers up to 10 times higher energy density compared to other battery types, which means it can store up to 10 times the energy for the same weight. This is particularly important for electric vehicles since we want to keep the overall weight of the vehicle, including the battery, as low as possible so we don't waste energy lugging around unnecessary weight. One single battery like this is called a battery cell. The outer aluminium casing of the cell usually has some numbers printed on it, including the voltage, 3.7 volts, the current capacity, which in this case is 4,800 milliamp hours, and another number, in this case 2170, which refers to the diameter and height in millimetres of the cell, in this case 21 millimetre diameter and 70 millimetre height. This number, 2170, is often used as the reference for the type of battery cell. Other lithium ion battery cells are the 1865 and 4680, which are physically smaller and larger respectively, and have smaller and larger current capacities respectively. In addition to these cylindrical cells, there are also flat rectangular cells, which you may recognise from your smartphone. They have been designed in this shape to be the same shape as a smartphone, but the workings inside are exactly the same. Electricity is the flow of electrons, which is what the battery cell releases from its stored chemical energy. Voltage, measured in volts, is the force with which the battery cell releases and pushes those electrons. The value of 3.7 volts is the nominal or average voltage from the cell. This is always 3.7 volts for a lithium ion battery cell, regardless of the size of the cell. Current, measured in amps or milliamps, is the flow rate of electrons. The battery cell cannot continue to release a flow of electrons that is a current indefinitely. Eventually, the battery cell will run flat and electrons will stop flowing until the battery cell is recharged. The magnitude of current and the recharge life, that is the time duration before recharging is necessary, are therefore linked. This gives us the current capacity of the cell, which is the duration for which a given magnitude of current can be maintained. A 4800 milliamp hour cell, such as this one we have here, can deliver a current of 4800 milliamps for one hour. Power is the rate at which work is done. Specifically in terms of electrical power, it is the rate at which electrical energy is released, is calculated as the product of current and voltage, and has units of watts. This then leads us to the power capacity of the cell, which is the duration a given magnitude of power can be maintained. This is the conventional means of measuring the overall energy storage capacity of a battery, is expressed in units of kilowatt hours, and is calculated as the product of current capacity and voltage. In this case, 4.8 amp hours multiplied by 3.7 volts, which gives us 17.8 watt hours, or 0 0.0178 kilowatt hours. But how is current, that is the flow of electrons, released from the battery cell? Let's open up the battery cell and find out. Inside the outer aluminium casing, we find multiple layers of different materials. The layers are wound into a cylinder like this to keep the cell compact. Let's unwind the layers and lay them flat. The layers are almost a metre long in this 2170 type cell. We have a layer of copper, graphite, porous plastic, electrolyte, 
another layer of porous plastic, and then a layer of lithium oxide compound and aluminium. The layers of different materials create what is called an electrochemical cell. A thin layer of graphite is printed onto the layer of copper. Over on the other side, a thin layer of lithium oxide compound is printed onto the layer of aluminium. The exact chemical composition of the lithium oxide compound can vary. Lithium cobalt dioxide, LiCO2, is common. The graphite coated copper and the lithium cobalt dioxide coated aluminium form two electrodes. Between the two electrodes sits a liquid electrolyte, the most common one being lithium hexofluorophosphate dissolved in an organic solvent. The copper and aluminium layers act as current collectors and each attaches to a terminal of the battery cell, which is simply an aluminium tab. We now have all of the necessary components in place to create our electrochemical cell. When a circuit is created between the two terminals of the cell and an external electricity supply is attached, such as from mains electricity, the positive side of the electricity supply pulls free electrons towards it from the lithium atoms making up the lithium cobalt dioxide. Thus the free electrons are attracted from the aluminium layer to the positive side of the electricity supply and are repelled away from the negative side of the electricity supply towards the copper layer. Note this assumes electron flow theory rather than conventional current theory. The lithium atoms, or more correctly the lithium ions, left behind in the lithium cobalt dioxide, are now out of balance, carrying a net positive charge since they have each lost a negative electron. We call this the oxidation half reaction, which is characterized by the lithium atom dissociating into a positively charged lithium ion, called a cation, and a free electron. We call the electrode of the oxidation half reaction the anode. The free electrons collect in the graphite. The positively charged lithium cations are then attracted to the oppositely charged negative free electrons. The lithium cations migrate through the electrolyte. We call this the reduction half reaction, which is characterized by the lithium cation combining with and being reduced by a negative free electron. We call the site of the reduction half reaction the cathode. The liquid electrolyte separating the two sides of the cell is passive to the lithium cations, but blocks the free electrons. This is fundamental to the battery cell. Lithium cations can pass through the electrolyte, but the free electrons have to go via the external circuit. We will see why this is important in a moment. Graphite is used since it has a very fine multi-layered structure, which is ideal for holding onto the lithium cations and free electrons. In this state, when the graphite layers are full of lithium cations and free electrons, the battery cell is fully charged. The process that we have just seen is what happens when the battery cell is being charged and is called the charging phase. We are now good to unplug from the mains power supply and go to use our battery cell, for example in our smartphone or even in our electric vehicle. When an electricity demand, such as our little DC motor here, is placed in the circuit between the two terminals of the cell, the process that we have just seen happens in reverse. This is called the discharging phase. The lithium atoms held in the graphite layers dissociate into positively charged lithium cations and free electrons. The voltage or force with which the free electrons are liberated is around 3.7 volts, which is why all lithium ion battery cells have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts. Note this is the oxidation half reaction and this electrode now becomes known as the anode. The free electrons flow through the circuit and back to the other side of the cell. It is the flow of free electrons through the circuit, which is the electric current and gives us electrical energy. The lithium cations are now out of balance once again, carrying a net positive charge since they have become separated from their negative free electrons once again. The lithium cations therefore migrate through the electrolyte in order to recombine with their free electrons once again over on the other side of the cell. Note this is the reduction half reaction in which the lithium cation combines with and is reduced by a negative free electron. This electrode now becomes known as the cathode. Once all of the electrons and lithium cations have shifted across, the battery cell is fully drained or discharged. However, the cycle can be repeated and the battery cell can be recharged, which is what happens each time you recharge your smartphone. By convention, the terms used for the two electrodes, cathode and anode, as per the discharging phase, are also used during the charging phase. Thus, 
The lithium cobalt dioxide coated aluminium layer is known as the cathode and the graphite coated copper layer is known as the anode. On each side of the electrolyte is a plastic separator, a thin, porous membrane usually made of polyolefin. This is a safety feature in the event of liquid electrolyte becoming compromised, for example by overheating, which may cause electrolytes to evaporate, or by deformation, which may cause puncturing and leakage. In such an event, without the presence of the plastic separators, the lithium cations and the free electrons will immediately migrate back over to the lithium cobalt dioxide. If this were to happen, the rapid chemical reaction could easily cause the cell to combust. However, the separators, which are electrical insulators, prevent the migration of free electrons. Thus, such a dangerous chemical reaction cannot occur. In a smartphone, you'll typically find just one 3.7 volt, 3000 mAh and 0.011 kilowatt hour flat rectangular battery cell. However, that isn't going to be enough voltage, current, power, nor energy storage capacity to power an electric vehicle. So in an electric vehicle, multiple battery cells, up to 7,000 of them, which in the case of Tesla are cylindrical cells, are wired together to produce much higher voltage, current, power, and energy storage capacity. 